known Tupac before he was born, when Fanny was pregnant with him. When Tupac was shot the first time, he very famously didn't want to stay in the hospital anymore. And then he was convicted of sexual misconduct. So I went to see him uh, in the attorney visiting room, Clinton Prison. He said, Uncle Jamal, there was a young brother back, you know, back in the prison ward. He said, Tupac, I can't believe it's you. You're my hero. You be getting all the women, you know, shot at the police. You get all the money. And Tupac said, double time out, young brother. If that's why I'm your hero, then I don't need to be anybody's hero. And he said, Uncle Jamal, I realize I'm probably going to die. They're going to kill me because I'm a Shakur. And my choice is, do I want to go out like Tony Montana from Scarface? Or do I want to go out like Malcolm X? And I want to go out like Malcolm. He said, I've been smoking, drinking. I'm sober now. And I'm clear now. I'm going to deal with my sobriety one day at a time, the way mommy is. And he laid out this vision. So I'm starting these community centers for these kids all around the country. I'm starting these production companies to tell our stories. A lot of folks will say, well, what happened? Because when he came out, you know, he got into the East Coast, West Coast thing and he was beefing. What you're supposed to do with someone when they tell you, I'm trying to deal with my sobriety, I'm trying to be focused, is keep things away from them. And then when he got out, there were folks that wanted to pry on that weakness. Hip hop, smoke that joint, drink some champagne. You can celebrate your home now. To his credit, within a year of things kind of getting out of control and the beast getting heavy, he himself began to recognize, not only do I have to step away from sugar and, 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 and death row, I need to squash these beasts. So he had this One Nation project. He created this thing called the Code of Thug Life. It caused a lot of young gang members to stop fighting, to stop banging in the hood. He started, you know, building the plans for that community center and for that restaurant and for those businesses. He had gotten engaged to Kadada and was going to, you know, move fully into film. He loved acting. And he'd be the first to tell you he loved acting more than music. Tupac starred in A Raisin in the Sun at the Apollo when he was nine years old. I'm sure he'd have like a dozen films, not only that he had starred in, but probably a dozen more that he had directed by this point. The universe and God only knows where arts and activism would be if Tupac, as a young man, he was only 25 years old, how many of us had had those wild rides and had life-changing things happen, but, you know, did dumb stuff when we were in our teens and our 20s. But if he was still with us, I know that not only the state of the community, but the state of black arts and activism would be in a dynamic place. Jamal Joseph, writer, director, educator, activist, you're watching The Root. I joined the Black Panther Party when I was 15 years old, but became one of the youngest national spokespersons for the Black Panther Party, but then went to prison and spent a total of nine and a half years. I started writing poetry, doing plays. I enrolled in all the college courses that I could. They found out that I had done some theater and said, you need to do something for Black History Month. So I said, okay. And I went to the prison library and there was nothing there. I was like, no, let me, let me try to write something. And I'm rehearsing with a couple of the brothers and some of the leaders of the Latino gang showed up. And they're sitting there with their arms folded like they really got beef with someone. They had had a couple of murders since they were in prison, right? Life on top of life. He stands up and he comes over to me. He was like, yo, I said, let me talk to you a minute. I was like, damn, it's me. I just got here. What happened? I said, he's not feeling his character. True story. So I said, why don't you get in? And he got in. I rewrote the play to add Latino characters. Some of the white brothers got suspicious. They came seeing if we were kind of forming a conspiracy against them. We added them in. Men who grew up hating each other, not trusting each other, are creating together. There are some funny dudes in prison, and they're good hecklers. It didn't matter who came in. They were like, oh, Leah, Leah, oh, you an actor now, huh? Why don't you act like you're going to pay me them cigarettes you owe me? They're really a tough audience, you know? Literally, you can get killed for a bad review. And about five minutes into the play, Something amazing happened. People were still shouting from the audience, but it was in context of what was happening on the stage. They were engaged. It was audience participation. We're talking back to that screen the way we do at Magic Johnson Theater. Don't trust him. He's shady. But they're in the story. We got a standing ovation from our peers, from men who were doing 10, 25 years life in prison. People started saying, you could do a movie. You're a good director. And I said, 
yeah, I want to do that. I think I can do this. When I was released from prison, I pursued film studies at a couple of different programs, worked in theater, and started studying and apprenticing on film. The shorts and a feature script that I had written about the Black Power Movement got me into Sundance, the directing lab. I went on to, to write a few screenplays, and then I directed for PBS and for Stars, and then from there, a few feature documentaries. So my advice for young people who want to get into film is to experience art beyond film as much as you can. Tupac Shakur, who was my godson, listened to classical music, took ballet. A lot of people don't know, studied Shakespeare when he was in Baltimore School of the Arts. Tupac would be the first to tell you that if you haven't done Shakespeare, you're not a real actor. So he was so knowledgeable that when he was creating, he was able to pull from all those different areas. So find your voice and also live. You know, travel so that your vision of the world is larger than just your community, than just your apartment, than just your friends. The next project is going to be Panther Baby, which is an adaptation of my book. And it is a coming of age story because joining the Panthers for young Jamal, for me, was as much about trying to find a path to manhood as it was about political expression and rebellion.